politics. My name is Günter Fellinger from Europeans for Tax Reform and now I would like to talk about um, the Serbian Kosovo Peace Agreement which is called a normalization agreement. It's not uh, the expected peace agreement that will be hopefully coming very soon because we all want peace in the Balkans obviously between Serbia and Kosovo that's really very important but between all Balkan countries and in general in Europe that's why we have this series of Pax Europeana European peace how to really establish lasting peace and prosperity in Central and Eastern Europe and of course you know from some of my videos I'm in favor of NATO and EU membership and that will be also one of the topics of uh, this uh, specific presentation on the peace agreement which was now on the invitation of President Trump 4th of September many of you have followed it the economic normalization agreement was signed between the Republic of Kosovo not named Republic partly unfortunately in that treatment but it is of course the Republic of Kosovo and Serbia the President of Serbia and the Prime Minister of uh, the Republic of Kosovo being in the White House invited by the President of the United States of America so basically that was very clearly a sign that this is an equal level that's recognition in the act because there is no more important nation than United States of America you are in the White House in the Oval Office side by side with the President that's basically symbolically a kind of acknowledgement of statehood if not recognition and that was really very important so thanks uh, to American leadership we really have moved another big step towards peace in the Balkans but of course it was very surprising that the main result and we will discuss a number of uh, aspects of it but the main result was the recognition uh, of Israel uh, of Kosovo by Israel that was of course long in the work and uh, congratulations to everybody who contributed and this is of course a big success and uh, really a breakthrough also uh, for the Republic of Kosovo in this difficult time and I congratulate uh, Kosovo and Israel for mutually beneficial recognition obviously you know the bit of a spin which the president has put on it that it's a mainly Muslim nation which recognizes Israel was very surprising for many on the Balkans because Kosovo itself and uh, most people on the Balkans don't see Kosovo now as a Muslim nation in that sense of whenever most of the people are of Muslim religious belief but that's not in the forefront of the national identity but okay if this is what it takes to get Israel and America active um, then it's absolutely fine I think because uh, for um, what really matters for the statehood of uh, Kosovo is the recognition and this was a major breakthrough and now uh, we can really hope that the, uh, the ball is now in the European court and now the 10 countries which are either in the European Union or want to join the European Union that means uh, Spain, uh, Slovakia, Romania, Greece and Cyprus already in the European Union or the five uh, on the way that means Bosnia, Serbia, Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia that they also recognize uh, Kosovo and we are moving to a big step further towards lasting peace in the fragile periphery of Eastern Europe on this uh, border zone with hostile Russia and of course that would be fantastic. So the 10 countries if you are thinking about it it's now exactly the real good moment to make peace it's always a good moment to make peace and it's a perfect moment to show that you are a good ally and it's worth uh, to uh, support you because it is a bit of a question also for the Europeans to reassess our Balkan strategy now in the 2020s because we see how Serbia has acted I have here the list of the 15 countries which Serbia has convinced to withdraw the recognition of Kosovo in a very uh, mean and uh, negative and brutal global campaign which Serbia has led these are the 15 countries in the center and uh, I have here the five countries which uh, in the last five years have recognized Kosovo additionally so we are close to 100 recognizers but we have lost 15 due to this quite um, uh, poisonous uh, campaign led uh, by uh, President Vucic uh, since he came to power in 2014 and uh, these are all very small countries basically also often sadly it's proven 
financial incentives have made the difference of uh, Serbia paying these political leaders in countries like Grenada and the Comoros and uh, Suriname with all respect to these nations, Nauru, uh, but basically paying them off uh, between 19, uh, 2017 and 2020 has led to this uh, sad list. And I call on all them to uh, make sure that uh, they please recognize and understand uh, that this was the wrong decision. And I'm sorry that we involve all these small island nations in our inner European conflicts. And that's why it's so important that our 10 non-recognizers on the European continent, the ones who want to join the European Union, they recognize Kosovo. And so then we are more united and we don't have to uh, carry our internal conflicts to the global stage and, you know, buy off poor uh, elites from poor countries to get votes in our internal conflicts is really shameful. So I would like to remind uh, that it's very important also that all these 10 um, countries which have unfortunately not recognized Kosovo up to now, uh, they are either members of the European Union, then they should fall in line with the common foreign and security policy. That's the idea of European Union. But also it's very interesting that all of them, I will repeat, all of these 10 are completely subsidized receiving um, uh, takers of European solidarity and give very little. Cyprus and Greece were saved in the financial uh, crisis, otherwise they would have been both totally bankrupt and partly they were. And we were very solidaric in order to keep them into the euro and also keep them uh, solvent. And they are obviously all the time uh, massive receivers. They are also Spain, <clears throat> one of the countries which has uh, benefited the most of European solidarity in the history of European solidarity and unification. And also Romania and Slovakia always uh, very, very strong receivers uh, of uh, this uh, help. And also when it comes to Bosnia and also to Serbia, very much on the take. Ukraine, Moldova, Georgia, uh, Georgia maybe a bit less, Moldova a bit less. But Ukraine, you know, after 2014, extremely dependent uh, on the European transfers. And, uh, you know, we are paying basically to keep these countries going and to support uh, their policies and their transformation, but they are not ready. When we call them, they don't pick up the phone. When we want them to recognize uh, the Republic of Kosovo, and most of the European countries have done that, then they don't pick up um, the receiver. And they all have their own little regional priorities, friendship network, uh, Orthodox Church, solidarity thing, internal fragilities which they protect them on the European level or their own personal friendships or whatever reasons with Serbia and then they somehow uh, block European progress on our common foreign policy and somehow, somehow claim to know then the situation and the reasons for the interventions better And then um, the Germans, Americans, French, Italians and most of the other European nations and the European level <coughs> and NATO, which has done the intervention and the recognition. That's a bit, you know, also questionable. <coughs> Sorry. One small break and then we are back here with the question what we should do now after the American summit. The Americans again, they are the global superpower. They have done what they could with this summit. They have not done everything because they could have also invited Kosovo and Serbia to NATO. They could also have uh, mentioned the WTO membership of uh, Serbia, Bosnia and uh, uh, Kosovo because Kosovo is even not really a candidate member for uh, the WTO, for the World Trade Organization. That's very regrettable because this would have been too global and important regional organizations the US has a lot of power into, but for various reasons they decided not to. But nevertheless, they got Israel to recognize Kosovo, they did a lot of uh, important uh, improvements. So America really has shown its leadership in the time of crisis, and that was very, very good. But uh, the Europeans are now in the responsibility in the second stage, and they continued the dialogue then after the summit last week. And so now the talk would be really that one of these 10 recogni non recognizers is recognizing. Maybe Greece, Ukraine, Cyprus, 
you know, the Greece and Cyprus, they want a lot of solidarity from us in the Turkish conflict, yeah? but they are not ready to for uh, Kosovo recognition. So solidarity in the Eastern Mediterranean is very much a one-way street. Yeah? You call Brussels asking for help, but when Brussels calls you, you don't answer. No, yeah, that's not very convincing in the long term, and in the short term it's very annoying, to be honest. Yeah? And when it comes uh, to uh, the um, question of including Bosnia in the conflict, we Iran, again have a peace, basically the Republic of Ser uh, Ser the Serbian Republic, the RS in the, the partial Republic in Bosnia and Serbia, because uh, normally the logical thing from the European perspective should be to treat all the free countries which are not in NATO, not in the WTO, which are complicated um, territorial issues, uh, Bosnia, Serbia and Kosovo, together in one package and really make sure they mutually recognize each other and um, that we have peace uh, in NATO, in the Euro, in, that's of course, the Euroization of uh, Bosnia and of Serbia, the NATO membership of um, Serbia and Bosnia, and, you know, getting all free into the WTO and then having all free on the way to the European Union. And we have all the financial leverage because each of these 10 countries very much dependent on European transfers. So what is now important uh, is that uh, we have uh, basically a focus on Bosnia from the European side and ensure that we talk with the Bosnian authorities, with all sides. Now we had a peace summit uh, with um, uh, Serbia and Kosovo. Now it's time for a Bosnian and Kosovo peace summit and also if it's um, what the Bosnians want, to move the Bosnian embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Because Kosovo is already on the way, Serbia seems to be on the way, but there were some negative news recently. But it's quite logical that all three of um, the non-NATO countries in the Balkans, uh, they move their embassies to Jerusalem. And also, obviously, that in this um, agreement, Bosnia recognizes the Republic of Kosovo, and uh, starts to make peace. It's easier for Bosnia because 70% of the population and of the politics are anyhow in favor of recognition. It's just uh, the 30% uh, of uh, the Serbian minority and especially here the nationalist Dodik which is against it. So obviously it's very important. It helps also in President Trump's strategy for another Muslim nation, Muslim majority nation in the Balkans to recognize Israel and move the embassy to Jerusalem, recognized they have already, but uh, to move the embassy to Jerusalem, that is a similar uh, case and a similar success, I think, and that would be very good for peace in the Balkans. So a deal like that would really help very much, and I urge the American authorities, invite uh, Bosnian and Kosovo leaders to the White House and uh, make sure there is another peace agreement. Yeah? This would be perfect also settling into uh, the, um, what I call the European House in Jerusalem. It is six European nations which are pro-European but uh, for various reasons not in NATO and the EU at the moment. That's uh, three in the Balkans, Serbia, Kosovo, Bosnia, but also Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia which are also very pro-Israel countries, pro-American countries. They want to join NATO and EU, but we have not given them the EU potential candidate countries. Many Europeans were very careful. So why not uh, all these six countries, which are not under common security foreign policy, to move uh, their embassies to Jerusalem and move into one European house uh, where Israel can support all these six embassies and these six embassies would be then uh, together in one house in Jerusalem, learn from the Israeli success story, because it's a very successful country, and also work to, uh, together on a daily basis in Jerusalem with the authorities and with uh, the uh, industry and business communities to also to engage Israel more in the development of the Balkans and of Eastern Europe and also to form a unity because all the six countries obviously in the coming decade should join NATO, European Union and the Euro and also that would be very good to be already united in the European House in Jerusalem, these six countries which sadly Europe is a little bit reluctant to integrate but when they would be already in Jerusalem united, this would be really helping a lot. Let me come back also to say thank you very much to the State of Israel for recognizing the Republic of Kosovo. 
that's really a very big step and I'm very grateful for that. And now we should really work on an Israeli-EU strategic partnership also after this big step and thanks a lot to make an upgrade towards a customs union because we have already a very strong trade relation but it would be good to have a similar customs union like we have it with Turkey and also pack the shake towards the euro in order to further economically integrate to make an internal market with Israeli with the four freedoms of good service labor capital and also invite um, um, Israel towards the new um, proposed EU agency for East Mediterranean gas exploration funded by the European Investment Bank in order to have all the riverine states of the East Mediterranean who are friendly towards the EU to help them to um, solve all these conflicts which we currently have unfortunately among allies and partners and friends of Europe and the West to have a common uh, agency to explore and lift uh, these um, uh, treasures which were recently found together None of the countries has the fiscal space to do it. The EIB has basically unlimited fiscal space and we can really do that together. So we get rich together by these uh, gas tre uh, treasures. We can reduce the European dependency on Russian gas, very important aspect, by lifting this East Med gas. And we can also regulate the relations between all our allies in order to avoid any kind of conflicts and escalations as some are, are bent to do. And so... Also, maybe Israel can help that Ukraine and Lebanon is also recognizing the Republic of Kosovo. And long term, I'm always been optimistic that Israel, as part of a two-state uh, settlement, can also join NATO one day. Maybe not in the 2020s. We will see how long it will take. But long term, I think we Europeans should also uh, guarantee with Article 5 and the security of the state of Israel and that's very important. But I will talk about the peace settlement a bit later uh, because that's also a very important topic. I want to remind you that we have <coughs> quite a tragic uh, terrorist past uh, from the Palestinian terror which was hitting Europe in the 70s. We have not forgotten uh, any of the victims and we will never forget and um, we will always be full of solidarity uh, with uh, the Israeli nations and we also have a partnership with the Palestinian friends who are now peaceful and non-terrorist but we will always be very close with our Israeli partners and please consider joining NATO it's a big step for Israel as well in terms of transparency and alliance but it's also a very important step to be mutually guaranteeing our partnership but now to back to the Balkans and back uh, to the normalization agreement a big step it was. There are several very important issues which were mentioned in this agreement. I want to focus first of all on the issue of mini Schengen. Look, I have educated for 15 years to create a, a union of the four southern Balkan states. I called it Balkan Benelux. But it would be more logical because they are all fully pro-Western and uh, Serbia and partly Bosnia is not pro-NATO, is not pro Western, so there is a big rift between the Northern and the Southern Balkans. We have made some progress, but unfortunately uh, there was not a lot of progress. We anyhow have the whole process of SEFTA and of the Regional Cooperation Council. They have now the Regional Economic Integration Area. One moment. That's very good. We have also the Balkan, um, Berlin Balkan process, so there is a lot of progress on that one. And, you know, we have just to merge all these processes. Because there is only one EU, there is only one NATO, there is only one Euro, and all the Balkan six countries should be in all the three instruments. Yeah? So, if it's called Balkan Benelux, <coughs> if it's called Mini Schengen, if it's called um, uh, Regional Economic Area, you know, if it's called Faster Accession, which I think is the most important, you know, if it's called the uh, internal market, after solution, there are so many different ideas which are really a little bit varying. That's all uh, basically overlapping. And, you know, the thing is just, it would have been wiser to uh, that uh, the Southern Balkans, uh, Albania, Montenegro, Macedonia, set their agenda and not big Vucic again creating his own branding and basically creating the idea that uh, Mini Schengen is his project. It's an alternative towards uh, the regional economic area 
and so on and so on. We have the Sarajevo-based regional cooperation council, so it would be so logical to work with this one. But anyhow, that's um, all fine. I call on all Bosnia and Montenegro also to join mini Schengen zone if it's good. Whatever liberalization, openness there is, you know, whatever the name is, it's good. But the aim is all Balkans in NATO, in the Euro and ultimately in the European Union and as fast as possible. Good step forward. So there was also the agreement on the seaport and the deep sea port in the southern Balkans. Yeah? I try to explain that this is a very expensive and complicated project, but it's very important, you know. We don't have so many deep sea ports in the Adriatic at all. We have a number of ports, obviously, in the Adriatic. Not so much on the Italian side, but more on the, <coughs> on the Croatian and on the Albanian side, but they're all Basically, it's just the Trieste and Rijeka, the, both the big harbors of the Austrian-Hungarian monarchy, yeah? the Hungarian harbor Rijeka and the Austrian Trieste, these are really the big entry points yeah? and the major harbors <coughs> on the eastern Adriatic. Yeah? But also, <coughs> looking back, there is not so many harbors. Yeah? These are really the biggest and most important harbors for geography reasons. And so when we want to do it, um, a deep sea harbor, and there's various ideas, flora, dures, it's all complicated and shallow, the Bay of Train, that's basically northern Albania, but the real one is the port of Bar, the port of Bar in Montenegro, that's the only 10 meter deep criteria, and there it's good to put the deep sea harbor for the southern Adriatic, the NATO logistic hub for the southern Adriatic, for the Eastern Adriatic to put it there and then to have Balkan Benelux, Montenegro with the seaport, the railway link is already there, so everything makes a lot of sense and really we should be economically as well in all this planning because and work with the existing infrastructure and the existing geography and not to dream of things which are beyond any kind of economic capacity. Coming back to the railway, because uh, there was also the idea a railway belgrade pristina to the sea. <clears throat> That's all very good, but never forget, you know, we all have to first build the highways because most of the transport of goods is in, um, bus in buses <laughs> sorry, and in trucks. So the highways are the main fiscal priority of all the states. And <clears throat> if we can do railways, that's really very good. But this has been done by other means uh, than the... Um, taxpayers of the region because there is no fiscal space for decades to come for such expansive project. What we need to do is to develop, establish an EU agency for Balkan railways owned by the EIB which can do that for decades to come but in the meantime to repair the existing railway projects towards Serbia to, to um, Montenegro to Bar and connect Macedonia and Albania decently with this line. That's really what can be done in the short term and that would be already very beneficial. So in concluding, the most important point I think institutionally from the American side next to the Israel recognition, which was a little bit of uh, playing it on the sidelines, yeah, but from the American side uh, was to open the International Development Finance Corporation office in Belgrade. And, you know, that's a very powerful, like the KFW, uh, the State Bank for Development from the Americans, and they want to base it in Belgrade. <clears throat> so I ask myself, why Belgrade? Wouldn't it be much more logical to have it in Tirana? Because this is an important institution. We have a free a NATO members on the Balkans, um, North Macedonia and Albania, and uh, also we have um, uh, Montenegro. And then and we have one non-NATO state who also doesn't want to join NATO and which has a very complicated relation with the United States of America. And there exactly we put this very nice office with all these projects attached. So, hmm, I would really think twice about this decision and think when also Serbia is now a little bit dragging its feet about moving the embassy to Jerusalem why not really move this office uh, to Tirana? And that's why I want to close this small presentation and really uh, say let's reward our NATO allies in the Balkans more. 
let's move this office to Tirana instead of Belgrade and really make sure <coughs> that we have um, uh, a strong alliance and when Serbia one day will join NATO there will be many things we can do for Serbia but as long as they are not a NATO ally we should not give important American institutions to Belgrade. Okay, that was a bit long all in all. I want to say conclude. <coughs> it was fantastic progress. <coughs> Now it's time for peace in the Balkans. Bosnia recognized Kosovo, please. Uh, Serbia join uh, NATO and adopt the Euro. And so we can really uh, have a lasting peace in the Balkans uh, together in the 2020s. And thanks America for the leadership. The ball is now in the European court and let's see what the coming weeks and months will be the results. I'm very optimistic. I think the crisis focuses the mind and we will have a very big progress for peace in the Balkans in the coming weeks. Thanks a lot.